All righty. Thank you everyone so much for being here. Um, I welcome you all to turn on your videos so we can see each other if you feel comfortable um, and feel like we're a little bit more together. Uh, thank you so much for coming, um, sharing space and being in community with each other. Feel so good. Um, thank you for loving and supporting the arts and this year and every way that you've done that. Um, yeah, we started 2020 in Studio 7 for Catalyst during this time, in person, super up close. And then all of a sudden we were not doing that. We were online classes, online conversations, and then eventually outside in starlight, right? Um, and I don't think I'm the only one here who can like say like one of my loves of my lifestyle last year was like being in Studio 7, being with everyone, seeing all the artists live. Um, and although I so miss that, I, I cherish the opportunity to fall in love with Starlight Square and being outside and seeing dance that way. Um, and now this is the Dance Complex's like first like online Zoom event like this. So I feel like I get another chance to fall in love with being with you all over a screen. So thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah, and with that, I'll, I'll pass it on to Peter to kick us off. And I am so proud of myself because I've remembered to unmute before I spoke. Nine times out of 10, I don't do that. So, uh, so yay for, for 10 months of, of muting that I have now circumvented. Thanks everybody for being here. And thanks Annie and Liam, who you may or may not see floating about. Maybe we'll make sure he puts on his video so you can meet him if you haven't. Um, it's been a year and, um, and maybe uh, a little over a week ago, we would have uh, had a different tone to this meeting, uh, to this coming together for sure. I know last week uh, I feel hopeful. And so hopeful I put on a few sequins tonight so you can see what the, what's happening there. And, uh, um, and as Annie said, you know, it, it's just such an interesting uh, time to, to accept that things are different and that as we go back to whatever new that we do, uh, you know, in the fall or whenever as we come back and we're, we're safely live together, uh, we all will, will be different. Performance will be different. Things are changing already and in some ways for the better. You know, we've really, um, like everything, in, in the uh, Boston Cambridge dance scene, I've seen so many realizations uh, from people who didn't understand the struggles we go through financially and getting work produced and all that. So many, oh, I didn't realize you were struggling this much. So my fingers are crossed that we're all advocating for more support for the arts, more ambassadorship for the arts, more uh, acceptance of who we are as artists in a field and that we can stick up for each other and speak for each other, even though we might have aesthetic, uh, aesthetically, we make different choices. We're here to, to help the arts be known as a vital dynamic force in this area. I've uh, been involved with Boston dance for uh, uh, over, uh, over 30 some years. And I feel like it's uh, no more waiting now. I'm impatient. After all this time in the closet, well, not in the closet, in my house, <laughs> which feels like time in the closet, come to imagine it, um, I come to say it. Uh, so I'm just excited to, to see you all here. So uh, thank you for all the artists who let us share their work tonight and over the year. A big, The biggest change for us um, this year was Starlight in the sense that in the first time I've been at the dance complex, uh, we were able to secure monies from the outside and this came from the city of Cambridge and the Central Square Business uh, uh, Improvement District. They, they handed over a pot of money and said, here, go produce dance. And for the first time, uh, thank God, I was able to say to artists, here, we're gonna divvy this uh, money up among you. We're gonna commission uh, uh, new work. We're going to have guest curators and some of them are gonna talk a little bit later today. Uh, we're gonna uh, continue on, on this plight and actually not have to always ask for favor or pay in, in space and uh, you know, bartering for space. So, so we're, 
I'm not going backwards. I can't go backwards on that because now, now we've, we, we've tasted that. So we're going to continue to fundraise so that artists get paid for their work. And I uh, will continue to make it better and better. Uh, you have my word on that. So Starlight was an amazing gift to us. And we're going to see some of the work that was presented there. And um, at the end, I have a really special big announcement that you guys are going to get here first. So um, I know that you, know, you might turn off your, your screen and uh, you might need to mute because, you know, life like dinner happens or things like that. But make sure you come back towards the end. And I'm going to turn it back to Annie, as we uh, get to see some dance on film, I think, right? Yep, so we're gonna see a little montage of some of the dances that happened this year. Oh, that's right. Sometimes agitation is a gift. I hope you be agitated with me. I hope it's more than a banner that you pass by and honk at. I'm one of them black lives. I matter a whole lot. If there is no engine of desire, your simple awareness in the moment, the naked fact of your focused consciousness.
I love the silence. <laughs> so I'll clap for everybody. Thank you. Thank you to all those artists. It's it's so nice to be put back in the audience. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to invite Laura Sanchez to come join me. Um, Laura, let, I, I want to introduce you, but I, I feel like maybe we should just start off. You can introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Uh, yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm Laura Sanchez, flamenco artist, uh, expressive artist, um, and educator. I've been teaching at the Dance Complex since 2014, and today I'm very excited to share the, my latest project, which is my first short film ever <laughs> that actually was born during uh, the pandemic, uh, especially during the first few weeks few months actually uh, of the, um, the lockdown, in the middle of the lockdown. Uh, and yes, I don't like, um, this work was made out of my personal need to find another way to express myself. I was um, asked to do a video performance for um, like a, a theater because we couldn't perform in person. So I started to work in uh, for this project and I ended up doing this other idea because uh, I got inspired and it actually gave me hope in the middle of a very um, dark time that uh, each one of us lived in a different way. Um, for me, it was bring, bringing back into my life past trauma. So it was for me a way to use the arts and the, what I call expressive flamenco is, is actually flamenco, but just the element of flamenco combined with other expressive art as a form of, of self-expression, as a form of uh, even a healing tool during uh, these times. And coming back to what Peter was saying, this is presented today and it has been presented in different film festivals worldwide because I think it's important to bring awareness about the importance of the arts, not only now, but always, but especially during the difficult times where we only have the art to emotionally get inspired, to read, to see art, to dance, to move. So that's how After Dark, which is the name of the film to, that was born, so. Yeah, that, that brings me to my first question. Um, looking at your performance for like the teaching artist performance this year, and, and you, you incorporated projection of film and things like that. Um, I had never seen you perform before 2020. And so I'm, I was, was incorporating film in that way or uh, exploring filmmaking for you, something that you were thinking out before the pandemic at all, or was it simply because of the pandemic that you, that you moved towards more different types of media? Yes, so uh, I've been doing experience, like exploring the use of other arts, including film uh, in the past uh, for uh, like expressive performances, which means uh, not necessarily with the purpose of presenting something, but like as a form of self-expression mm -hmm. that has been presented, but in different conferences. The actual first time I present this film or the film that I presented at the Starlight, which is different, uh, was created because of the pandemic. It was, okay, this is my new way to tell my story. And when I had the great opportunity to perform a Starlight and kind of like dance with the film, again, another version of the film, but like dance with that story was actually mm -hmm. the first time I performed on stage 
with the projection of the same um the same story right could you talk a little bit about the collaborative aspect of the piece uh of after dark yeah uh, yes because it's co-directed by Bele Maya. Mm -hmm. yes so absolutely this is uh Bele Maya is a uh, an international flamenco dancer who i've been working on collaborating for the past few years when the pandemic hit i it was just as spontaneous as everything that was born out of After Dark. We ended up reconnecting and she was doing this uh, offering mentorship for artists to create art. So basically she was doing it online and I said, Belen, I have this idea, I have this project, I have this draft. Will you like, will you help me make it like something stronger and something like more compact? So basically we've been collaborating and co-creating like based on my like on the idea that i created but like it was like um she was providing feedback or like pushing me to go deeper into the spaces and into the creative work and, and that, there's, yeah. there's an aspect of working with like more more people isn't there too like dialogues you've been having yes absolutely yeah yes absolutely it was absolutely like it was a, like that that dialogue where mm -hmm. uh we will meet and then um, we will have a conversation like, what do you want to show? Uh, what aspects of your story? Well, like, what do you want to tell? And then have a conversation. I will go into the room because with after that, I became the artist, the cinematographer, the editor, like I kind of like became everything. So I was like, I would record and then present to her like, what do you think about this? I have this. Uh, images that I picked, what do you think? And then she will be, why don't you use these? Why don't you try this other thing? I love this movement. Why don't you explore more here? And actually have someone even from the, like, just virtually connected, I felt supported and I felt pushed to go deeper and to continue creating and not like, okay, you know what? This doesn't make any sense. Like, it's just like, have someone like Laura. Okay, let's go. I like this. I, I like explore more on the other side. So. It was actually a great opportunity for me and, and for actually the reason why this, this work was born and is now able to be presented. On that note, should we watch it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, yes, I just want to say that today we are presenting just a short version, but yes, as a, for everybody, this has also been a project that I've been sharing with self-identified women to give voice to their stories through After Dark. And we will continue doing that. So I am uh, going to ask everybody, if possible, after watching the film, write on the chat whatever word come to mind without thinking much. Just go there and, or even do it like, what a spontaneous words come after watching the, the short film. And that's, and yeah. Thank you. I feel like I should read these out loud. They're so beautiful. Escape, heal, letting go, creative, lamentation, transform, visceral, birds, feathers, wings. Ooh, ooh. Honest release. Wow. Thank you all. Thank you. I have one last question I feel like I want to ask. Um, how do you feel like this experience making this film is informing what what you're looking to do in 2021 with your performance and creation? That's a great uh, question. And first, I just want to say that uh, technology is giving us great opportunities as today to share. Sometimes the audio and the video is not in sync because of the technology. So I offer to uh, provide a private link with the password if someone wants to watch the film in case that they couldn't see. Because for me, the, the sound and the images were mm -hmm. off. So just in case someone uh, wants to see the whole thing. And coming back to your question, it is actually, uh, it has been a transformation for me as some of the worst freedom, uh, the um, owner's release has absolutely been a transformation in terms of who I am as an artist. Like I've been doing this research that, that research that actually was published today, which is amazing. 
And thank you, Peter. Uh, so yes. it's actually all about this work, like all this After Dark is a work that I've been doing for the past few years. And the pandemic gave me like the push to like finally present the type of work that I want to do. So After Dark is, has been a personal transformation and also a transformation as an artist and like open up a way of like, Laura, this is what, this is where I really want to continue working. I really want to continue working in a way that uh, expressive arts, including flamenco as part of that, is what I want to focus on. Like I want to continue the work, like creating work either virtual, in person. I would like to bring After Dark on stage. I would like to transform this into like a multimedia uh, expressive performance. Uh, where we can use this also in the probably like who knows maybe the fall maybe the end of the year to also use this as a healing moving release space but in hopefully in a real life situation we look forward to it thank you everybody follow her i put her website in the chat thank you so much laura thank you so much all righty um, now we're gonna see a little excerpt of um, Emily Beattie and Veronica Barron before they, they chat together about their work. Thank you. I you for months, say, my ungrateful uh -oh, friend. Oh, uh oh. A second later, she points to my pubic hair again and says, A witch! For a kid with limited spoken vocabulary, she really makes every word count. Count, 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 count. Count, count, Yeah, I welcome you guys to the stage to come chat. Thank you. That was um, that was beautiful, Veronica. I loved I loved seeing that little excerpt. I haven't seen the full thing yet, so um, yeah. very lovely to see that. Yours as well. Yeah, it's really exciting to get to talk to another artist in these weird and somewhat isolating times about each other's work. So, oh. um, I wonder, do you think uh, perhaps we should start by introducing ourselves a little bit? Sure, you can go first. Great. Um, so I'm Veronica Barron. I make work that sort of sits at the intersection of theater, puppetry, dance, um, and in that little excerpt you saw, and music as well. Um, so mixing some shadow theater in, which I know you've used some shadows in your work, which I'm really intrigued by. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I found that um, it was such an interesting experience to present um, work for a live audience for the first time at Starlight Square after this long absence. So pass it back to you and then we can get into it. Great, uh, my name is Emily Beatty and I'm a multimedia artist as well. Um, I use dance, uh, technology, and a highly collaborative process to create new worlds. Um, I make a lot of solo work as well. It almost feels on the side, but maybe it's part of it. I don't see the connection yet, <laughs> but I do a lot of solo work. And this one um, really was speaking to a population that I really want to express is, is also struggling very deeply, um, which was so great to see in Laura's work, um, which is uh, people who are caretakers. Um, during the lockdown, it was uh, kind of back to newborn status um, for parenting and caretaking in whatever way you're doing that, um, especially, yeah, it was very unexpected. So um, the, the um, I can't claim credit for the text you heard. It was um, actually from a, another online group that I'm part of um, where we have every Monday or Friday, we have freak out Fridays where you write these stories of the things that your kids say. And um, 
that just was like a gem and uh, <laughs> I, had to, I had to use it. Um, so the piece is about just the sudden weight, it's called a weight all over, um, the sudden weight of having to uh, be everything for this, um, this person again, 24 seven, which was um, sudden and awkward, as you can see, like in the movement, um, that's what it was trying to express there. So original uh, sound composition by Eric Gunther, original music uh, movement by myself. Um, and then I, I guess I credit, credit the moms for all the, the text. Yeah. How would you say that preparing that piece, um, and you created the piece originally in, in this pandemic, right? So this is a, is a brand new work. Yes. Um, so I'm curious about how did, how did that process feel similar or different from solo works that you've made in the past? Oh yeah, we, we spoke, a, we exchanged a little bit on email before this. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to, um, to kind of, I got to think about that a little bit more um, after your response. And um, if the difference is that the process was mostly outside. There's a park in Somerville that has a platform and I just put more clothes on and decided that I was also exercising after 6 p.m. but it looked just a little bit different than everybody else's in the park. <laughs> Um, I'm pretty sure I got on a few TikToks and some other people's Instagrams secretly, but that's okay. <laughs> it's all advertisement. Um, so it felt like, uh, as I wrote to you, um, the process was really public in a way that instead of being inside a dance studio and making something and then showing it pub publicly, all the steps were kind of revealed at the same time as it was being made. Um, so that was, it was exciting for me in a, in a way um, that also paralleled the exposure of um, sometimes unseen work for caretakers that you're just working, it's isolated, you're inside your house or wherever you are. But this was very, very public. Um, so that felt, an, it felt like an interesting um, process. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that dichotomy between like public and private feels very, um, it's definitely been on my mind in the pandemic and definitely you know, in a somewhat of a different, I, yeah, it's just been present in the work that I've been exploring too. I think that um, it feels as if, um, for me, it feels like the nature of being in public has really shifted because normally there's lots of public spaces that you can be in or semi-public spaces. Like you can go and take a class at the dance complex or go see a show or go to a cafe. Like there are so many public spaces to be in. And I feel like in the pandemic, um, when it became that like my world is, and like I live alone in a two room apartment. So I spent a lot of time in this exact chair. Um, I'm actually moving next week to Somerville from Cambridge. So I'm like, I'll be in a different house all the time. It's gonna be amazing, you know? Um, but just thinking about like suddenly, like this was the bounds of my space and then outdoor space was like, this is the other space I can be in. And I feel like, yeah, that has been really interesting where it's like, um, like I, what is it you do inside your house that normally nobody sees? Um, and, and just like, I too went to the park and like, was like, I'm just gonna have to make it feel normal that I'm just in the park dancing because there's nowhere else to go other than like, I can dance in my kitchen or I can dance in the park. But like, both are kind of weird places to do it. Um, but I think that, yeah, I don't know. Just thinking about like, what do we do in different spaces? Um, I at least feel like I've had to, to really change how I'm thinking about like what's appropriate for each space um, and bring some of the things that feel nourishing into the spaces that they normally wouldn't be in. And that's been actually kind of nice about. Yeah, that leads me to one question about, um, so you had, so you live, you're living alone and you're, you're in this space a lot. And then all of a sudden you just land on the stage in starlight after <laughs> that period. I'm, yes. I'm curious about like the energetics of sharing space with the audience even if you weren't close. Um, yeah, and just knowing that many eyes are looking at you now. <laughs> yeah, I remember it feeling really profound. Like I didn't expect that it would hit quite so hard, but I think that um, I just found myself thinking about, um, you know, um, like I, like many artists had been trying to lean into some of the, you know, silver linings of like, what can I do during the pandemic? And so that means like exploring recorded work and that's been really cool um you know and it's great you have to what I find about recorded work though is like you have to find a good moment while the camera's rolling and then you have to edit it to make sure you get that good moment right so it's like so I've had some satisfying projects like in my house um and that's cool but then hitting the stage in person at Starlight I was like oh 
Yeah. The live moment is with these people and it's, it's so obvious and we all know it from our normal lives, but I have been like nine months without any of that experience. Um, and I just felt like, I remember it feeling quite profound that um, like in, in the excerpt of the piece that you saw, Black is the Color of My True Love's Hair is actually an older piece, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'd performed it many times before, but never outdoors. Um, and there's a lot within that piece of like, I'm, I'm sort of interacting with a person in a frame and the frame is quite contained. Um, and I'm kind of breaking into it and breaking out of it. And I think that felt quite, um, <laughs> I don't know, weightier than usual um, in light of like the confinement I had been feeling. But I think especially taking a piece like that, that um, is kind of dealing with this sort of like confinement and openness and then taking it out into the open air, um, with a live audience after nine months of, of not having that audience performer connection. I just remember it feeling uh, just like a real sense of like increased intimacy or maybe I just felt it more of like, ah, this is really different from recording something at home. Um, this is like, I have to be alive and present with all these people in real time. And that to me is like, it's just a nice reminder of what it is that we do live performance for. It's actually something that we're doing together in real time in that moment. Um, it's just, it's just so special. And I, I knew it before, but I felt like I knew it more after that. Yeah, I was looking at you and thinking of the frames that, you know, it's obvious you wanted us to focus on the shadow box, but then the, the shadow space, but then I was like, but I can see her lower body and I can see everything. And just thinking like, oh, the frames are getting infinite. And um, it, yeah, it, it is kind of an interesting mind play to think about, to think about that. Um, yeah, I also was a bit exposed because there's a highly improvisational part of that the solo that I created and um you know sometimes you're outside and the dew settles and condenses onto the marley so you're like okay now it's a skating dance <laughs> um and uh so I, I I was improvising and feeling yeah kind of exposed <laughs> there I'm like okay I am really not joking about this I'm trying to stand up <laughs> with this weight um, which I was really thankful for. Um, I also really loved seeing your costume kind of billow um, from the wind. I don't know what the weather was like the night of your performance, but um, I just love seeing the natural elements kind of sweep in, you know, at, at, at some beautiful points. Yeah, I feel like I, I too remember there was a night when there was, you know, that little bit of dew on the Marley. You know, that, um, uh, but yeah, I felt like there was... Um, it's something that I felt like, you know, as long as we have to be in these weird circumstances, I've really been looking for like, um, what are the moments where um, something is special, like, you know, the, the lemonade out of lemons kind of moments of like, this is something that couldn't actually happen under other circumstances, as opposed to just like, there's a lot to mourn about the things that um, haven't been possible. And then there are some things that are special that weren't possible before. And I think that while of course, outdoor performance was possible, I think like, even just being in that outdoor space um, that was a parking lot previously. And, you know, now suddenly it's like, well, here we are under the moon with the dew on the Marley, with the billowing wind. Um, I think there was something that felt very um, real about that in the sense of just like, oh, you know what? This was in part made possible by these weird circumstances that we're in. And, um, and I, I just felt like really grateful for that. And I think there's something about like being out in the elements that, um, yeah, I don't know that 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 we we haven't had a comparable thing like that, um, and that felt like something to really celebrate that Cambridge has come together to you know put this performance space together. Yeah, I feel grateful too. Um, is there anything you would tell, thinking about just would you tell yourself a past self that you wouldn't believe or that you you need to help you carry you forward um, a lesson maybe from in the early pandemic into now, either art wise or life-wise that you think, okay, that was good information. I'm going to use that <laughs> or I'm going to tell that. So your past self, tell your future self. That's what I meant. Ooh, so you mean like, is there advice from my past self that I think my future self should take? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> or that a lesson or a lesson. Yeah. A I think away. that's a great question, Emily. <laughs> I think, um, you know, I think that my, I think it's like, the, it's like, I think so often lessons are things we have to kind of learn again and again. I feel like lesson <laughs> from my past self that I think my future self would do well to take. Um, early in the pandemic, uh, I think I just was like, you need to take care of your body. 
Like mm -hmm. you were, you are the, the carer and you are also the care taken for, you know, and I think you were speaking about caretaking work and, you know, I've, I've been in a position of like, I'm, I'm the person who lives here, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so while I've done some caretaking work, like remotely for relatives and things like that, I feel like for my physical caretaking, I've just been like, oh, you, uh, you, you, you can't go to, you know, a rehearsal hall in a dance studio. So you're going to need to be both the carer and the cared for. Um, and I think that's true um, across the board. So all this to say, I think past self came up with a good idea that current <laughs> self hasn't kept up with, but future self should, which is, I was like, you know what? We could, at the very least, we could do a one song dance break every day. Nice. And I wrote it down on my pantry and like kept a list of what I was dancing to every day. What? So I think that's my, and it, it really was just like a one song moment of like, you know what? You only have to commit for three minutes to do something that is um, taking care of your body. And um, yeah, I would give that back to, to future self as well. Yeah. Nice. It was a, a bit of concrete action and also a bigger picture. That's great. Yeah, totally. <laughs> And what about you, Emily? I feel like, um, gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I was listening so intently. I didn't think, um, mostly that, uh, it's going to work out. Mm. It's going to work out. Um, and, uh, oof. I feel like doing whatever you need when you need to do it is okay. <laughs> um, and that will lead to it working out, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Good. I yeah. feel like that's the perfect moment for me to catch up. Thank you so much. If you guys want to drop in the chat where we can see you next, what you're working on, where we can follow you and find you, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you for be, being so vulnerable and willing to let us just shove you in a space to converse with each other. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank and before we're going to take a little break, but first we're going to see a recording of some other artists who some may be here. I haven't been able to check, but some might not. So thank you. Hi, I'm Ian Spencer Bell. 2020 reminded me that dance is essential because it quiets and unites. Hi, my name is Ava Untermeyer and I'm a Boston-based dance artist and educator. While 2020 was an extremely difficult year, it was also a year of artistic expansion and growth. 2020 expanded my understanding of dance performance as I participated in outdoor performances such as Starlight Square, online and virtual events, and even produced an evening length show, Phantom Art, in my own backyard. 2020 also expanded the way that I related to dance. I was so used to using dance as a way to develop intimate connections to other people. And this year found myself using dance to develop intimate connections to other disciplines, such as dance and music, art, nature, and somatics. While 2020 certainly wasn't easy, it was also a year of expansion, creativity, dedication, and growth for both myself and many other artists in the Boston community. What evolved was everything that I had been working on for so long uh, became reinforced in 2020. So I had the opportunity to hyper-focus on, on what was important to me in the creative process, not just in creating, you know, a dance or a painting or whatever art project, um, but also <clears throat> the essence and polishing, uh, polishing the entire process from your day-to-day -day routine um, and, and, and the essence, um, really connecting to, to the essence of, of myself and allowing that to truly have the space um, to blossom and to just explore all these different uh, areas that um, need to be explored in order to evolve, uh, to consider what remains and what needs to be eliminated. <laughs> like it's sort of on the way of the process of evolution. So a process of elimination 
um, you know, yeah, what is necessary to, yeah, it was a moment of observation um, and definitely experimenting with all the different elements and, and being true and honest to myself of like, okay, what's next? <laughs> that was, <laughs> thank you. Um, I hope everyone's doing well, the dance complex. So much love from this beautiful place that I'm staying at um, in Honduras. <laughs> so just a little nature time. Hope everyone is doing absolutely beautiful. Much love. <laughs>
we're ready to go up. He's that Liam, he just knows. Hey everybody, I want to give a shout out to Liam who's behind the 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 uh the curtain there, just like the wizard. Uh, uh both Liam and Annie have been really, really great. And you know, as many of you know, we've been um uh had to shift gears in October and November and we had to let some staff uh, go to furlough. Um, uh, I'm happy to announce that Jane uh, Murphy is back uh, from furlough, and so she's winding her way back into um, uh, to uh, to uh, our our day to day lives, which is really really great. But um, but Annie and Liam have been doing really great on holding down the fort on communications, and um, as well as everybody else who's who's there. So a big round of applause to you for keeping us open five days a week. And having like programming and 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 nights like this that look really simple, but you know it is hard opening a, a bottle if you don't have, know how to work a you know a corkscrew. Liam does that too. He's just amazing. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so so now we're we're gonna just segue a little bit here, and and this conversation I think is gonna uh, kind of be added to as we go along. We're a little ahead of schedule. Um, but uh, in a second, Kara Philly is going to join me and then some other folks. Um, this year was really um, uh, an interesting time. You know, as, as many of you have said, you know, uh, Veronica and Laura, uh, Emily as well, that certain things just, you know, the pedal went to the metal for us on some actions at the dance complex and, um, and, and for myself and making my, my own art. And other things, just like this momentary pause of, you know, is, is the car going to go into gear? And then all of a sudden, 80 miles ahead. And um, and in one of those uh, aspects, Starlight, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier that it was it was the first time that someone handed a chunk of money to us to to try to do our, our best in uh, in presenting. And um, uh, the other the other aspect of that was that um, we we also um, we also, uh, oops, I have a direct message here, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that out loud. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, the, uh, oh, that's right, we have one more video too. Did I skip that, Annie? All right, we're gonna do it later. How about you, that? You can chat for a minute, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so one of the other things that we, uh, we did this year was to specifically, uh, and we were doing it before the pandemic hit, was to look to artists um, and and hand over the curation or to share curation of different nights. And so on the books, Hi, um, everyone. Oh, on the books, uh, that was Allie. Hi, Allie. Uh, <laughs> on the books for uh, for the the spring season uh, was uh, it goes like this, uh, curated by Kara Philly. And then when the pandemic hit, um, uh, we had reached out. Uh, we had. We've been chatting with Marianne uh, Harkless about Racine's Black Dance Festival off and on over the years, and they had they didn't have a home, and then the pandemic hit. Um, and we reached out to Asia Upchurch about uh, curating a, an evening of hip hop. Well, we didn't know exactly what. We thought it was hip hop, but it ended up to be that as well. And so what was so exciting was that we, we um, we got to a place where where we were trying to, uh, you know, uh, in our in our best foot forward possible, share the the power of curation and whose choice is it that that gets to who gets to see what, um, and we make our mistakes. Uh, God knows we've made uh, many of them. I've made many of them in the in the last five to seven seven years I've been here, um, and uh, but this felt like the the right uh, time, the right um, the right freedom, mainly because we had money and we could we could turn to. Um, to each of the curators in a different kind of way and say, hey, uh, you know, here's the space for free or here's, uh, uh, here's some money to, to help bring other artists on. And, uh, and prior to that, I just hadn't felt comfortable to that. The other evening that was a, a curated evening as well, was the Davis sisters brought to us um, uh, different artists. You heard Leland Wilson, Leland Baker earlier uh, and his saxophone. Uh, uh, that was part of that uh, that night, I believe. So uh, lots of really great things. So Annie, do you think we should look at this compilation first before we go to the thing? All right, so I've, I've done the intro too soon. And this is why I need Annie and Liam always nearby. So uh, um, so we're gonna look at another compilation of, uh, of artist statements and artists uh, uh, um, feedback as to their experience performing this year. Is that correct, Annie?
Hi everyone, welcome to 2021. A year ago, I was a catalyst artist at the dance complex, exploring ancestral memory through melody, dance, and narrative. Um, I was collaborating with a dramaturg named Helen Lewis and um, sharing with audiences. Here we are, fast forward, I've aged 50 years and it's 2021 and I look forward to working more in community, gathering people to explore ancestral memory, uh, celebrating, honoring, questioning grandmothers and um, through my collective Excavate, I hope to start an online forum and then continue in the studio. Hi, so in 2020, I had to evolve artistically in several different elements of, of, of what I do. So I, I, I've been teaching online for over 10 years and producing, producing music and video also for a long time. So last year I got to work on all of this and develop it. And a third one that I'm super excited to share was the fact that I figured out a way to actually play live percussion, live drumming for dance classes all over the world. So, so this was something as well that I'm super happy that I got to evolve in 2020. Uh, so it was good for, for my self-esteem and emotionally because there was more demand uh, since everything was online and I got to produce music and video for uh, uh, events that had correspondence from major networks like NBC and CNN uh, and I got to, to figure out a way to do live performances too involving a dancer live as well she was in her house and I was in my studio here uh, uh, I was playing as I mentioned live drumming for dance classes uh, at with teachers everywhere and I'll give you an example in she at work for a dancer in Los Angeles she was teaching in her studio in Los Angeles and I was drumming for her class in my studio here in Boston so so in, in that sense uh, uh, as far as what I had to artistically evolve 2020 was great I got to be a better online teacher <laughs> I got to produce better music and, and, and video for, for events. And I got to also uh, uh, figure out a way of performing and uh, up my game to be able to perform live for dance classes. <laughs> yeah. and ran through 2020. I'm Kim Holman and I participated in the Dance Complex's Catalyst Residency, which kicked off in the second half of 2019 and ran through 2020. What is really significant that I didn't realize at the time was that the February 2020 performance that we had would be the last time that I presented work in a kind of concert setting in a year, which is the largest gap, I think, in my career thus far, and I miss it so much. Thinking back to that performance, um, I shared a draft of my work, Contradictions and Casual Self-Loathing, which is kind of a humorous glimpse into pain, really, um, of kind of growing up female experience. Um, the best part was that I could share not just with my network of audience members, but that of the dance complex and that of each of the artists that participated. And I got to have intimate conversations after each show with different audience members with how the work connected with them, which is something I can take and adjust and utilize and move on to a new draft in the future when we present live art again. Okay. So, so now, right, Annie, <laughs> we're going to talk with some of the, some of the guest curators that are people who curate their own, their programs. And I think, uh, who's in the house? Is it Kara? Kara, you might be up. 
on everything here. Let me give her a little spotlight here. There she is. Oh my goodness, I'm huge. <laughs> You're a huge star wherever you are. <laughs> a little box or a big box. And, uh, hi. Uh, so good to see you. And actually, you know, as I um, as I read the little notes on the side, we're going to welcome uh, some other folks to the to the room as well. Uh, the Davis sisters, Alex and Joy Davis, are going to join us as well. Oh my God, the boxes are getting smaller, but we still love you. That's really really great. Um, hi, you guys. Thanks for being with us. And um, thanks for having us. Our pleasure. Our truly our pleasure. It's really good I, to see you all everybody tonight it's like i miss um you know, the dance complex you know we're going strong and i must say it smells better there uh not because you're not there but you know there's you know it's clean it's clean daily and there's less sweat in the air so it just smells better but that's no reflection on the not specifically because any of the three of us aren't there right. Right. i actually okay. i actually will say i was there um about an hour ago for oh. rehearsal for my it was my first time back in wow. the space um, for rehearsal, and it, I have to say it felt really, really good, right. um, and, and it did smell better. Good. I'm so glad. <laughs> so anyway, um, you know, we, we have no, uh, we, we don't have any plans here uh, as we're chatting, but we have a few minutes to talk and we might be joined by uh, different folks who are coming in and out of their own other uh, Zoom parties in different parts of the world. Um, but you all have this common thing where you, you had guests on your concert, that it wasn't all about you, you know, and uh, that you, you decentered it all. And, um, and I, I, I wonder what, you know, uh, what that's like for you. How was the experience uh, uh, performing Starlight as a special animal, but also in 2020, uh, Starlight and, and hosting these folks? What was that all like for y'all and anybody joining? Yeah. No, I, I, love, I love, well, I love that you already threw out the word decentering mm -hmm. because that's something that um, Joy and I have been talking a lot about and, and thinking a lot about in our process. And Kara, it's something I witness in your work a lot, not to like put words in your mouth, but it's definitely something I've witnessed in your work. So decentering is definitely feeling like a really uh, in necessary practice right now. So not only does curating shared shows allow for a greater distribution of resources and a greater reach of audience members and, you know, a greater engagement of the community, all those wonderful things that curating in other artists can do. But it also, I think, is really necessary work to be doing right now to, to be looking at, you know, decentering our own voices, especially specifically as white artists or I, I identify as a white artist. So specifically for me as a, a white hetero, well, I'm not, no, cis, I'm not hetero, I'm very gay. Wow, oh, did there. you just make an I'm announcement very, to us, Alex? Oh my God, this I'm is my coming out. <laughs> Mark, I'm straight. <laughs> my boyfriend is like three feet <laughs> playing video games, which is the straightest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. I meant cis. <laughs> I meant cisgendered. I'm white and cisgendered, but I'm super gay. Let's I'm get the label straight, mister. Okay, yeah. come on. <laughs> I'm gonna go make another gin and tonic. Joy, okay. do that thing where you make me sound good, you know? <laughs> that thing you do where you take what I say and make it sound better than it is. That thing. I, I, I mean, you said it. It's, and, and yeah, the decentering word feels significant in terms of like awareness. I mean, in terms of like, um, yeah, I, I, I think it's, I think it's about opening the scope of vision. And I think there's a, I think the dance complex does that really well. And then I think the artists that the dance complex engage with does th do that well. And so I think there's like one thing that we've been thinking about as the Davis sisters and in a lot of our uh, opportunities, specifically in Boston and somewhat beyond. I'm sitting in Charlotte right now. Um, and so we've done some projects down here in Charlotte um, as well, but there's, um, there's a practice that we're trying to engage with, which is like, you know, you throw something into the pond and it ripples outwards. And so it's like thinking about curation in like a rippling outward sort of thing where the dance complex 
you know, we had beautiful conversations with Peter and ongoing conversations. We love Peter and, and like talking about like, who, who can we bring on board to like make this a really well-rounded program for the opener of the starlight stage, the dance portion of the starlight stage. And like, then how can we as like sort of sub curators then like open the next circle? Um, yeah. So the decentering thing is nice because it moves the circles like sort of like outwards and outwards. Mm. Yeah. The, the words that everyone is using are, are great. And, and thank you, Alex, for, for, for giving a, like a really lovely compliment. I, I really appreciate it. And I feel like you know, that decentering and that ripple that you talked about, Joy, is really a form of connecting ourselves with, with others, whether they are in an audience in front of us, like they were at Starlight or, you know, virtually across the world. Um, I feel like that for me has always been a, a prime focus of any work that I do is very much about connecting with others and the, the opportunity to curate at, um, at Starlight, I was super grateful to the Dance Complex for putting that trust in me. It's something that I feel like as a developing artist, you know, I don't, I don't have a big name. I, I'm still like, I'm still exploring and, and figuring things out and to be given this like, this entire evening and saying like we trust you enough to one you know put on a put on a, a well-run decent show <laughs> but also one that is that is important I think in the specific times that we're that we're living through right now to be able to highlight voices of various life experiences and um and to not be just about me or about my white experience or my cisgendered hetero I am hetero my husband's <laughs> in the other room um uh <laughs> ah, I know um <laughs> let's so, go around Everyone you know it's it's, it's so much like bigger than that so I we'll start <laughs> yeah, I very I very much appreciate the fact that um I I felt very privileged to be able to try something new as well so the the show that I um curated was not dance specific and um it was very much based in storytelling through various modalities and so it was something that was one completely um I think new to to me and my process I had never curated a show ever before. I had never produced a show and I was supposed to have done it on March 27th. It, I think it was the last, or it was the first show in the Dance Complex roster to be canceled once we got the news about COVID. So um, to have a chance to see this through felt like a very big, significant first step for me. Um, as an artist and so super grateful and again like really um think that it was important for the shows that were curated by the dance complex and these sub curators like the davis sisters and and others um marianne harkless and uh asia upchurch um to to really give some voice whether figurative or, or literal voice to artists from um from all over it's uh um well utmost co in confidence in in all of the folks uh uh who guest curated and and you know the the process that we've kind of come to over the years is uh, in, in choosing uh, uh which we're getting better at articulating and translating out you know uh like you know catalyst artists now recommend new catalyst artists and now this feels like another realm of oh well who else is curating to this to this effect you know to work with um and you know marianne has had a a, a loss a death in the family recently so i don't know that she's going to join us tonight uh and uh, asia might have made a recording but might not have no she didn't arrive so uh, so i'm sorry the two of them aren't here to talk about 
what we conceived originally in that realm was like to look at the season of starlight and and you know we had already committed to Kara and we and continue to commit to artists um uh if i if i may share that um uh that joy and alex can i share you know that we, we've been talking about future residency work as well because we had committed to them before the um uh, in our old catalyst slot, you know, whatever that becomes now that COVID has kind of interrupted that too. So we're, um, and then Jimena. Yeah, I'd appreciate if you didn't tell people about okay. that. Can we? I'm sorry. And we, just like I wasn't Peter, supposed to. Actually, Peter, we weren't ready to share that. Um, but when you came out as straight, I figured everything was on the table. <laughs> right, okay. Sorry. Anyway, um, uh, and uh, also Jimena Bermejo, who helped us with 10 tiny dances in our 60 second, you know, one minute slot. You know, she'd come up with this amazing uh, uh, concept that she's been utilizing mostly with Mobius Space uh, in Boston for many years. And so, so one of the, I took just a great, great delight in that, in that we were able to, to work with you all and work with them. And further, just further the practice. And I'll, you know, I'll admit, you know, when, uh, you know, I get I get nervous about quality, and 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 I feel like that's not necessarily about what's good or bad. Like in technique, is it good technique or is it bad technique? It, it there are many definitions of technique, and there's many definitions of performance, and there's many definitions of ways to go about it. And I think there are actually many ways to think about curation. Exactly, and that's. So like, I think there's a very like historically white institutional way of thinking about like this museum buys and owns this image right, this right. cultural entity. And then, I don't know, I think of like, I curated my boyfriend, you know what I mean? <laughs> like I thought about like what, who he is and I curate, you know, this, the stuff in my home and I curate um, the food that I eat. Right. So I think curation, for me in a very like loose definition, it's just kind of like a heightened sense of selection mm -hmm. or I don't know, like thinking about the choices I'm making and the ripples that they make. Right, right. Instead and, of just like, of thinking about selfishly, like I'm going to make this choice for me. I think curation is thinking like, like to use choice image, I'm gonna make this choice because of the ripples it's going to create. Yeah, yeah. And, and all of you and, and the art that you curated, as well as what happened in, uh, uh, in uh, Black Dance Boston, the four nights of Black Dance Boston. And, I, and I want, I'd like to add in Roots and Routes this year too, because that was an amazing a group of, of people, including Jean and, uh, and others. Uh, uh, Emily Beattie, there was a triptych of artists there with Emily, which was one, and uh, 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 Catherine Siller, I believe, and then uh, a third, who's, I'm sorry, is escaping me. But these ideas of, 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 of gender um, uh, and, and genre, postmodernism versus storytelling. I mean, it's like, you know, there's a certain kind of privilege it is to just be postmodern. And I, and I just so appreciate that that all of you and all of them were just uh, looking at a full range of aesthetic. Um, Kara, I wonder if maybe I could ask you a question. Uh, uh, Kara and I, uh, when Kara was working more fully with the dance complex, and we welcome her back anytime. Uh, the uh, <laughs> the uh, we had we had done uh, some workshops on universal design, and you know, and some people think, oh, um, universal design is about people with disabilities, and and Karen, not to put you on the spot, but I see there's a correlation between universal design and and what we're doing here as far as like being good for everything. I don't know if you want to speak to that or not. Yeah, I mean, I think it again, it, it kind of goes back to like allowing our ripple, our initial drop into the bucket to um, help affect. <laughs> <laughs> or drop evening. into the into the mason jar right a ripple of <laughs> vodka into um you know how how can we allow that to to have a further reach and and um if people want to that's the big thing i think if people would like to be affected by it um but for in terms of universal design one of the takeaways um that uh, was from, this was the Mass Cultural Council's um, uh, 
um, process of being designated as a universal participation organization, which the dance complex is now, um, but um, was really just about thinking of how we can, we can uh, bring people who are in the margins, um, uh, give them access to what is happening um, in the center. Um, also, like what Peter said, how do we make an experience um, not better for one particular uh, demographic or group of people, but you know, how can something universal really be something that is eye-opening and and beneficial for everyone you know thinking of it as a as a collective good <laughs> versus a targeted good um and so yeah i don't i i don't know if that answered your question that was, that was perfect in my in my mind i i think this rippling out is 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 really uh uh is is the bomb in, in a way that that you know each of us has our own practice and we can stay um in it you know like in our little bubble but also um what's good for the field of dance what's good for audiences um we used to joke around when um you know uh, some choreographers of my uh uh I won't put it on my generation i think every generation is guilty of this but you know make dances for themselves and if the audience wants to come along uh well okay then you know I remember heated discussions about the uh, about about you know how does an audience come into the work and 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 I think that we we're looking now at a time where where we can use everything that's coming up in our anti-racism work and and who who has the privilege to do this it, it can teach us like you know are we inclusive you know among art forms or or uh, that postmodernism versus narrative versus uh, ritual versus whatever you know which we all have so. Um, it's just damn good that we're uh, uh, we're going through it. So, um, for, I for think any there, there's something worth commending about the dance complex curating artists to make these curatorial choices to like play. There's a play of power structure there that yeah. I just want to affirm and point out that like your your artists are often in a very transactional way, in a very capitalist way, looked at as disposable as right. in like we are bought and sold by venues and right. bought and sold by these institutions. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you didn't just choose other guest curators who curate elsewhere, uh -huh. but the fact that you identified folks with artistic practices, including Asia and all these other wonderful, Marianne, and, and gave them slash us that is, radical in a way well thanks I, I think being an artist helps being in this role too you know so uh so i'm i'm thrilled and and the staff i mean uh as uh as fluctuating as we are up and down right now because of covid and, and expenses i think that also i mean i listened to annie and liam uh uh a lot you know and and when rachel was in the role of a program management uh and and kira you were in that de facto because there were so few of us working when you were working at the dance complex that everybody did everything but there's that that sense of um uh, uh circular collaboration that i think we we, we try to do and it, it doesn't always feel like we're as successful as we can be but thank you uh thank you for your thank you for your service as curators and thank you for all that you've done and hopefully will do in the future and um, I, I think we're winding down our time. I have one announcement left. And I think, I think we might be inviting you to go back to the gallery at this point. A round of applause to our curators. Thank you so much. Thank you everything. very much for having Thank you. Having us. Thank you. And we'll send good wishes to Jimena and Aisha and Marianne as well and to your sweater there. Um, again, I wanna thank uh, Liam and to, uh, to your sweater. I meant Alex, I, I said sweater. <laughs> I am my sweater. Alex, is your sweater straight or is it gay? Thank you so much for asking. Uh, it's still going through a process of uh, Or it might be queer. So that's the next piece, I'm not quite sure. Um, uh, so uh, 
So thank you so much for being with us. And Annie uh, and Liam, I want to, again, thank you. Uh, Annie has been doing great work and I at the dialogue with her on, on what's hitting home and what she sees as the trends on our different uh, social media accounts. It's a hard job at the dance complex because we serve so many uh, decades of experience from our elders uh, to, uh, to our youth and everywhere in between. And you can pick any decade to belong to as, as you want. I'm thrilled that we, um, that we have folks in their 80s and 90s studying with us still. And, um, and, and we have, a, in a normal year, we have three-year-olds studying creative movement, um, et cetera. So, um, so uh, also, uh, as we close down, we're gonna, after I'm done talking, we're gonna replay the, um, if you came in late to the conversation, which some of you did, I know, we're gonna play the re uh, season recap montage that we did earlier. So you might see yourself dance for 20 or 30 seconds. And, uh, um, and uh, so we'll use that to take you out of this. But it, takes, uh, it makes me very happy to announce the following, uh, that uh, the Dance Complex has been gifted a space at Biomed um, in the, uh, sorry, in the, I'm so excited about it, I can't even say the words, in the complex over at Kendall Square known as the Canal District by Biomed Realty. Biomed Realty, some of you might know, have, uh, are developing a theater space that will hopefully, uh, if on schedule, be up and running within three to five years where uh, we hope to be able to produce uh, dance concerts and, and the like uh, along with alongside other uh, arts organizations. We've been very good to the arts community, especially the dance community here in, um, in Cambridge. And uh, uh, to that end, we're opening a new space an uh, arts movement creative laboratory. It's a pop-up space that will be good and running up for a year. We've just uh, installed a, uh, about a 30 by 40 foot dance floor into the space and it will be uh, used for residencies. Um, and if you wanted to, can you put the, there we go, the logo, I love it. Uh, it'll be used mostly for residency work for artists and residents, uh, the artists that we uh, got interrupted in serving uh, this past year. We're also able to adopt and host other artists and organizations, uh, including um, uh, some of uh, uh, Studio 550 and Callie's work there as well as others. So um, look for uh, requests for proposals uh, for anything as, as you know, a small as a four hour chunk of time uh, to, you want four weeks there or recurring Sundays or whatever it is, uh, we'll try to uh, fill, fulfill everybody's needs. It's a, it's a great place for rehearsal, for live streaming, for uh, videoing uh, you know, your work. Uh, it's, we're not thinking of it as a classroom space, although that might happen from time to time, but it, it's really about the need that we were hearing in our conversations with some of you over November and December when we heard the hint that this gift might be offered to us. We really wanted to make a place that was different than the dance complex and truly was a, a parallel to the scientific creative laboratories that happen over in Kendall so that it, it's this kind of uh, parallel action over there. And we're gonna hopefully have lots of great talks with scientists about creativity and art uh, along the years. So um, thank you. Uh, I'm putting out a, a thank you to Caitlin uh, Klinger who's been working on that as well as Jane Murphy and, um, and our friends of course at Biomed uh, as well. So that's the big news. You'll see it tomorrow or the next day. So you can kind of uh, you can kind of revel with all that too. And don't be strangers to us on that. Annie, what's your final word? Uh, two words, thank you. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Have great nights. Thanks for joining us. This uh, program will be available at some point to watch. If you wanna send people to watch it, we'd love that too. Have great nights. Thank you for sharing more time with us artists and audiences. We, we appreciate it. Thank you.
Sometimes agitation is a gift. I hope you be agitated with me. I hope it's more than a banner that you pass by and honk at. I'm one of them black lives. I matter a whole lot. If there is no engine of desire, your simple awareness in the moment, the naked fact of your focused consciousness.